Hey guys, Deal Games here, and today I'm going to be sharing with you a bunch of tips that will help you improve your PvP skills. Now, these tips are going to be used best on servers where gear and weapons are easily acquirable, so remember to take that into account when employing these tips. My first tip is that it's important to try to improve your click speed. Now, this may not seem like such an important thing, because Minecraft can only register a certain amount of clicks per second, but it is actually a good thing, because if you click fast, you're going to immediately hit your enemy as soon as they get within your reach range. So we're going to go ahead and demonstrate this now. We're going to start off just clicking slow, clicking fairly slow here, and as you guys can see, I'm not landing many hits, not doing very much damage to them. This is with a fairly decent click rate, about 3 a second, but if I improve to something like 9, which uh, I think is my average when I'm PvPing, you'll see that I get a ton more hits in, he's going to get knocked back a lot, and uh, you're also going to see that I'm just going to be getting so many more hits overall because I'm going to be hitting him as soon as he gets within my range. So there you go, you can see that clicking faster than 5 clicks a second is actually important. The next tip is that you're going to want to aim for your opponent's legs in order to get a priority hit. Basically, if you aim for the legs, you're going to be more likely to connect and the server is going to be more likely to register your hit. So this is always an important thing to do. Watch Danny and Jordan fight it out while Jordan aims for Danny's legs. As you can see, Jordan's aiming lower and as a result, he's landing a lot more hits than Danny's able to because the server is favoring his hits to Danny's. The next thing to remember is that it's always important to try to get below your opponent when you have the option to do so. The best time to do this is when your opponent is on a hill above you or when you're both fighting in water. If you get below somebody, then your head is going to be closer to their feet than their head is, or is going to be to your head. That's kind of hard to understand, but basically when you're below them, you're going to be able to reach a little farther than they can, so you're going to be able to connect more hits. Danny and Jordan are going to go ahead and test this now. So as you can see there, Danny is taking a lot more hits than Jordan because he's up higher, and Jordan is able to hit his legs, but Danny is not as easily able to hit Jordan's head. So this is very important when PvPing. If you can get below your opponent, that's an excellent way to win. One of the most important things to remember in this type of PvP is that you need to be able to have a good strafe, and you need to be able to keep locked onto your enemy even while strafing. This can be tough, but if you get really good at it, then it will help you so much in your PvP. Jordan and I are going to go ahead and demonstrate this now. As you can see, by doing a little bit more strafing than Jordan does, I can get in a lot of hits, and he can almost barely touch me, just because uh, he's not able to stay locked onto me. And if I can stay locked onto him, then I'm going to be getting a lot of hits and doing a lot of damage. Another thing that can be really vital in PvP is increasing the DPI on your mouse. Now, a lot of non-gaming mice don't have this feature, but if you have a gaming mouse where your DPI can be adjusted, I would recommend adjusting your DPI by around 300 a day until you feel comfortable at your mouse's maximum DPI. Here, I'm going to show you different levels of DPI and how much faster you can acquire a target when playing at a higher DPI. This is the lowest of the three DPI settings on my mouse. I'm moving it back and forth uh, rather fast, and as you can see, I'm still moving slow. So if I played at that DPI all the time, then it wouldn't be very easy for me to lock onto a target. I'm going to increase it by another level, and as you can see, while moving my mouse back and forth at the same rate, I'm turning a bit more. And at the maximum level here, you can see that while moving it back and forth, I'm moving a lot. And if you can get comfortable with playing at your high DPI all the time, then you'll be able to grab a target very quickly, and you'll get a lot more hits and do a lot more damage for it. So that can be very effective. The next thing to remember in this style of PvP is the importance of the Strength 2 Potion. Now when you have a Strength 2 Potion on, your damage is multiplied by a factor of 3.6. This is huge because not only does it do extra damage to the player, it also does extra damage to their armor. 
So I'm going to test this with Danny now, and you guys are going to see just how big a difference this can make. Alright, so we're going to open his inventory. And you can see his, dam his armor is undamaged right now. I'm using just a regular Sharpness 5 sword, and I have no potions on right now. I'm going to hit him once. And his helmet has gone down by a durability of 3. And if I'm correct, that happens every single time I hit him. But, when I drink a potion of strength, this is strength 2 that I just put on. Hit him again. Durability went down from 257 to 252. So, instead of 3 hits, I got 5 there. Or 3 damage up. So now he's at 351. Let's go ahead and hit him again. And that time he went down from 351 to 346. So, basically, we're getting an additional 2 armor damage points applied when we drink our Strength 2 potion. So that's really important to remember in this style of PvP. Another important thing to do is to try to get jump crits when you've broken somebody's helmet. This can be really helpful because the jump crit does some additional damage, and even if somebody has a god apple on when they don't have a helmet, you might be able to kill them with a jump crit. So Danny and Jordan are going to demonstrate this now. So Jordan's dealing jump crits, Danny is just chugging gapples. And as you can see, even though Jordan, or sorry, even though Danny only had his helmet broken and he had a gapple on, he still died because of those jump crits. If you were just running at them and swinging without doing any crits, then they probably would survive. But because he was doing those jump crits, Danny ended up dying. This next tip is a quick one, but it's actually very helpful. Basically, you want to chug gapples as much as you possibly can without running out because you don't want to run into one of those situations where, say, your pants break and your gapple runs out at the same time. Because in that situation, if you're only in prop 4 and the other person has a sharp 5 sword, you're likely going to die just because you won't have enough protection from the regen 5 to stay alive. This last tip involves the use of Splash Potions of Poison and Swiftness 2 Potions, and it's usually used when you think your enemy is going to try to run away from you. What you want to do is drink up your Swiftness 2, throw the poison at your enemy, and then they start running away, and try as they might, they won't be able to sprint very well because that poison effect is going to stop them from running. So as you can see, He's trying to run away, but because of my strength or my swiftness too, and the use of my poison potion, he is not able to get away from me. Alright guys, so those were my tips for good PvP. I use these on a daily basis to try to win a lot of my fights, and I am in the long run successful at that, so uh, you guys can go ahead and employ some of these tips in your PvP. Hopefully it'll make you better. Big thanks to Danny and Jordan for helping me out with this. Uh, you guys can thank them on the server if you see them. Until next time, see you guys later. Deal Games, signing out.